Welcome to Low Energy Seamus. Today I'm running on three hours sleep after doing 24 hours of awakeness yesterday. So today I am low on energy because I am the solemn main character, the, the mysterious, alluring main character. And I'm the comic relief. Exactly. Usually I play the comic relief character as a main lead. And I think that's the reason why my videos have not been successful. Because you can never lead a video with a, or a movie or, or a show with a comic relief character. In this essay, I will explain. Let's just do what needs to be done. Oh, okay, fine. Maybe every month we do a beta episode. So I need to sit quite a bit lower here, I think. So now I am the main character and you're the comic relief one. You need to say something funny. Oh, oh wait, okay, I got a, I got a joke, okay? Okay, so um, um, there's, there's this guy and he, uh, he, he really loves trains, okay? He like loves trains. I'm bored. Um, he loves trains so much and because uh, what, what, he loves trains so much, he one day steals a train because he doesn't know how to drive a train. He crashes the train and, and uh, he kills everyone. And uh, therefore he gets arrested he and put on death row. And it doesn't just steal. It's never happening that the sheriff kills everyone on board the train because he doesn't know how to drive a train. He was just a bad conductor. I'm done being the main character. Did you get it? Because uh, conductor, as like a train conductor, as well as he can't conduct electricity. Well, that was certainly an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, we've been we've been looking at the feedback on the videos, and by that I mean Vegard has. Um, but I thought to start I would uh, define comic relief because it's very good to get the facts on the table. So according to the Wikipedia. Page, <laughs> Do you, do you guys want to know what comic relief... Vegard, how would you define comic relief? I feel like it's a character that kind of breaks the tension a lot. That's exactly what it says in the, in the, the Wikipedia page. Yeah, because I think sometimes a show or a movie gets a bit too real, so it's kind of to help the audience not feel so uncomfortable. Perfect definition. Everyone give a round of applause to Vegard. Wow. I don't even need to be here. He is the main character. I'm back on comic relief duty now. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm watching like a more serious movie, let's say like a fantasy or a sci-fi blockbuster, I'm always gonna like the comic relief character the most out of all the characters, just because it's the one character that kind of makes me laugh, I guess, and that's the point. And I feel like you probably relate to. Yeah, that, me just trying to crack jokes in serious situations. Like you put the fun in funeral as you I do, say. I do say that. At funerals as well. I actually, oh, I've got a funny story about some comic relief I added to a night last night. I'm gonna leave the person nameless, but I was out with a famous pop star. That's not even a joke. I was out with a famous pop star who has done arena shows. My friend who I was out with said, oh yeah, Seamus would never lie to me. And I said, that's true. Honesty is my worst trait. It's my biggest weakness. <laughs> and then this guy goes, I wouldn't say honesty is a weakness. It's a strength. And I said, well, I don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, he just set up my joke, but he didn't realize I was joking. Okay, wow, energy, energy, energy. Cool. Firstly, I want to talk about some of my favorite comic relief characters, and I made a list of them. I immediately have one in mind. Okay, let's go, let's go. So you'll know this one as well, because we watched it together, Judy from Dead to Me. Okay, okay. They're both funny, mm. and it's meant to be tense and comedic at times, mm. but... I feel like Judy is the is a comic relief character, mm. but it's usually you're laughing at um, almost at her yeah. and the things she's saying rather than b like a bit of. I wasn't even thinking really of like uh, shows more in that that nature. I guess when I was thinking about this, because obviously my brain immediately goes to like sitcoms, and I'm kind of like. Okay, but all the characters are meant to be making you laugh in some way or another in a sitcom. I think with a character like Judy, for example, you're kind of, you're learning what she's like as a person. So there you kind of, that I, that's why I always say is that you find a lot of TV shows where there's a lot of time to develop the characters. You start finding things funny because that's the kind of thing that character would do. But I was kind of like, for this video specifically, trying to think more like focused on animated movies and uh, comic relief characters in there, because I feel like these are a more, almost stripped back to a basic level of a story. Not to say they're kids' movies, but in terms of stories, they're usually more simple than like a, let's say an Inception or something. It, it's gonna be easier to understand Inside Out than Inception. <laughs> the list that I've made, and this is my, my tier list, okay? I've got a top two and I can't pick between them. Donkey from Shrek 
and the genie from Aladdin. I think those are the two perfect comic relief characters in animated movies. I might be missing someone. It's more they're trying to be funny, but the people around them don't particularly find them funny. That's kind of how you hit me with, with the humor. <laughs> You're literally describing the kind of funny that you do. Like where, <laughs> because the thing you are saying is funny, but it's usually, it's usually because you're hitting it so hard. So everyone is kind of like eye rolling, but they're also laughing. Okay, I get it. You have the classic Merry and Pippin from Lord of the Rings. I think Fred and George are also kind of just the same as that. And I also think another personal favorite of mine is uh, Luis from Ant-Man, who is just one of the best characters in the MCU. And again, it's just this trying very hard to be funny. <laughs> And most people don't really find him, but he's hilarious. He's perfect. I love him. I also think there are a lot of examples where comic relief doesn't work very well. But I, I think this is something that can be very subjective just based on what you find funny and what you don't. You know, I, I kind of find a lot of the time that bumbling oaf character not to be a very funny example of comic relief. And I have a few examples of them that I want to go in more specific detail because they have like a whole movie made revolving around them in certain cases. An example of just a character from a mainstream franchise that just did not work as a comic relief character, at least at the time people kind of agreed it didn't work, was Jar Jar Binks. I just do not find him funny and he's just like cracking like very childish jokes in a more serious movie, which just never worked I felt. And it's just kind of like the joke is, oh, I, I'm stupid. I, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Ha! <laughs> and and that and that's kind of the whole joke. I think that's probably the most well-known example of just a comic relief character falling flat and probably ruining a movie for people because of how much it fell flat. There is another one where you have Kronk and Isma. Yeah. Where you have the goofy, dumb character and the person who's really annoyed with them, and I think that's. That is funny. It, I, think, I think when you have two, you know, like it kind of makes a new really dynamic. Yeah. I think it really works when you have the person who's really annoyed mm. with all the annoying stuff because that makes you feel like you're not just sitting there annoyed because you see the character who's yeah. already doing that for you. I would also argue in the case of Emperor's New Groove that that is just pretty much a comedy movie. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think, the, I, they very clearly lent into it and they don't really try to focus too much in having a concise story. It's just like, yeah, this is just gonna be a funny mess and yeah. you're gonna enjoy it. And that was definitely a Pixar thing with their sequels is trying to lean more into humor. I think the reason this happens is because for some reason, animated studios like Pixar decide that they just want to make movies revolving around the comic relief character as a main character sometimes. I think what happens if it's a sequel, but it's not separating the franchise is mm -hmm there is a knowledge that maybe there is a lack of story and yeah. you have to kind of make up for it by having the audience laughing rather yeah. to kind of hide the fact that, oh, sh we did make a sequel. Maybe we didn't have enough stuff to make a sequel. Yeah. But yeah, so I think there's a real issue that occurs when you try and get a comic relief character to carry a movie on their own, because typically th that's not really what they, they, they do. <laughs> to be honest, I mostly want to make this video as my annual excuse to rant about Cars 2's existence. We've got Mater over here. I, I don't believe Mater is a strong enough character to carry a story on his own. And that's immediately the problem. But also it's just not well written either because they don't really bother to develop his character in Cars 2. The plot of the movie is, let's just make this tow truck that's kind of dumb and speaks funny become a secret agent with British spies. I think that's the thing. When this happens, often you have to do the scene that's showing the vulnerability of the character and showing why they are this way. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing. There's a, a breakdown moment where you go, why though? Yeah. And then, then you get that openness and you kind of then you can be invested in the character again. And that and that's kind of the point. They don't have they don't ever have a moment in Cars 2 where they like pan back on Mater's childhood and reveal why he is the way he is, which I, I do believe you can make a movie around a comic relief character and it be an entertaining movie, but you have to write it extremely well. You have to dial back on the comic relief a little bit 
because that can't be the thing carrying the story. Yeah, you have to delve into what makes this character interesting beyond them being a goofy, funny character. I think that's more of a Finding Dory example as well, where they do develop the character in Finding Dory, and that's why I'd say it's a significantly stronger movie than Cars 2, but I still don't think it's perfect as they go, because again, with Finding Dory, again, the, the majority of Dory's part in Finding Nemo is she's kind of like a butt of the joke, the butt? That was that was an unintentional reference, sorry. Nemo! You touched the butt. But I think an arguably even worse example than Mater and Dory are the minions. Oh my god. The, 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 I think these are the worst example of comic relief just in existence. I think yeah. Minions is way less a family movie than a Pixar movie is. But yeah, sorry, this is what but what the point I was leading into with it is that um, I think because Pixar and also Illumination see their movies as kids movies to an extent, they think they can get away with making these movies where they make the comic relief character the main character in the sense of making a Minions movie, making a Cars 2 with Mater as the main character, Finding Dory, and knowing that it's going to make a load of money because you're making the kid's favorite character the lead in the movie. Yeah, and they do, they always make money. All of those movies made a crap load of money. Lion King do both of them. Pumbaa is like the one that's like the butt of the joke. And then Timon is the character trying to be the funny comic relief character. Yeah. So you kind of have both of them in the same movie. Um, and that's then that's very effective. But like what, they made like Lion King one and a half, the Disney sequel. Which actually I was okay with, surprisingly. <laughs> it is a clear example of like trying to turn these characters into the focus and the character they focus on isn't the one that is um, Goofy and Pumba. They focus on Timon. He's, he's trying to be fine. And it's the same with Mike Wazowski, I would say. Monsters University, which I think's by far clear of finding Dory in Cars 2, revolves around Mike Wazowski, which is again, more similar to say, he's trying to be funny and that's his, that's the, that's the, the bit. Again, it is, it's an opinion thing. A lot of people don't like Monsters University. Um, I feel like it's becoming more liked ever since I did my video about Monsters University. Are you I saying changed. you're a, you're an influencer? I changed the public perception on Monsters University. I, minions though, I, I just, I, we keep getting derailed. I just want to say some stuff about Minions that really annoys me. <laughs> Firstly, they can't speak English. Wow, Seamus, are you saying people who can't speak English? No, they can't speak a- okay, sorry, sorry. They can't speak an understandable language. I think you can make a great movie revolving a, with like, out even having characters talk. I mean, Wally, the first like 40 minutes of it, there's no speaking in it. Oh, oh God, I just, oh, it really upsets me. It just, their existence just really annoys me. And the, 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 the bigger problem I have with the Minions movie, they just, they can't even stay on topic. They're, 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 there's no like focused direction they are going in this movie. They're just kind of like, we're looking for a new evil master for ourselves. And then at some point they just become like, one of them becomes the King of England. And then they made a second Minions movie. It's easier to grind out a bad movie that's a bit of an afterthought with some recognizable IP like Mater or the Minions or Dory and still get billions. Their main thought is how can we make a kind of silly goofy movie that's going to make a load of money and that leads to them making a movie focused around Mater. This has been my <laughs> fifth video about why Cars 2 doesn't exist. It's the uh, fifth annual year of uh, going through this. Um, make sure to stick around for 2023's Seamus still not over Cars 2's existence and still mad about it. This is now becoming a series of Vegard and I discussing what definitions in movies are. This week's niche was comic relief. Let me know what you want us to niche next week. Obviously we're trying this series out um, some videos are gonna do better than others. Some videos are gonna be more entertaining than others. Um, we're just trying to discuss some topics that I feel like we've discussed just as a like out and about and just trying to make content out of it, I guess. And if you guys say something that I think super interesting, maybe that will be next week's discussion. Hi, you should uh, check out me on Twitch. This is uh, me streaming on Twitch right now. You should check that out. Thank you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching this video. You can leave a like, subscribe, watch another video. Check out my Patreon in the description down below, and I will see you guys next time. Okay, I said that probably too quickly. We need to like let the cards just simmer here for a second, and I'm sure people enjoyed this video. I hope they did at least, and yeah. Okay, cool. Bye.